Very good to have you on, my friend. You started with Carnival when Savage Garden were topping the charts in 97. How the hell do you last this long? Oh, just pig-headedness and persistence, you know. <laughs> nothing nothing more than that, really. Yeah. I think these days what we try to do is control what we can control. And we've been trying to get to a point to release new music for many years now. And there's been a number of false starts for different reasons, um, you know, creative false starts. And um, each time we sort of hit those hurdles, we've got to pull the band apart and put it back together. And it just adds to the um, delay in in the process of trying to create what we're trying to create. So, And then, of course, all just tours falling over, shows falling over, this whole sort of the great weight yeah. that we've all been in around <laughs> this um, pandemic thing. So it just it was starting to feel like we're slipping out of our control in the last two or three years. So mm. we have songs ready. Um, we don't have a record. We have a song, songs ready. So I think we're just choosing to control what we can at the moment, and, and that's releasing the songs as they come up. I hear you, but also following up an album like A Symmetry would be a prick. It's a f***ing hard album to play. <laughs> <laughs> it's a demanding... Demanding, ah, oh, it's a bastard of a record, that, that thing. There's, there's such, an, in our minds, collective minds, there's such separate adventures, all those things, like Asymmetry was its thing, it did its thing. It was angular as hell and, and, and a demanding play, let alone a performance, let alone a listen. So mm. we, we were quite good at separating ourselves from that. So all it takes and the stuff that um, is to come from this when it does different again mm. um but we're, uh, we're we're stepping into the unknown again but it's good i'm glad we are i'm glad yeah. we're here at least it depends if you like stepping into the unknown though absolutely yeah i like the unknown i'm not not too don't fear the dark too much um there's always a way out of it when you get in there um <laughs> you can be amazed what you can find in there well put my friend mate with carnival you put out all it takes a little while ago now a few months when you put something like that online, like Spotify or YouTube, are you a bit of a stat whore keeping an eye on it minute by minute kind of thing? I don't check the stats. Um, <laughs> I just let it go and do its thing. And you'll hear about it either way, whatever it does or how it affects people or moves the dial or doesn't move the dial, yeah. you know, you, you find out eventually. Matt, I'm on the Carnival Facebook page, which is run by fans and they love it. Would you say that, those hardcore fans are the hardest ones to please? I think anyone who is as passionate as you are about what you do um, <laughs> and shares, you know, the love and the interest for it, then I would say, yeah, I don't know. I don't re- – <laughs> we've got love and respect. I don't pay too much attention. <laughs> but I share, I share, you know, what, what, what that's about. So, yeah, I think – well, I, I think, yes, it's important and it yeah. matters. So – they should be hard to please, in my opinion. My compliments on the live Carnival DVD as well, The Decade of Sound Awake. Is it hard to nail the performance when you've got cameras right in your face? Yeah, look, it's always in, in, in your peripherals and you've just got to kind of just push that as wide as you can. And, yeah. you know, my best advice in those spaces is just to focus on the performance and push all that shit well wide so you can create something else in front of it. It's not easy to do, but no one likes seeing a camera in their face, man. But it would pull you off, though. You're in the moment, and then all of a sudden, this whopping big camera crane. Oh, it's really distracting. I was, like, a bit super conscious, too, because I was like, oh, that thing looks sick. And I'm, like, in my brain, I'm like, (laughs) this shot's going to look sick. I'm like, why am I looking at it and seeing, oh, crap, I've blown this one. Sorry. Mate, live is what Carnival does best, not just Australia, but overseas. We're going to talk about how you crack overseas really soon. But for you, it must be, I can't even begin to think how liberating it will be back on the road. Oh, absolutely. I think for anybody in the same position, it it really feels like it's been the great wait. And yeah, there's a lot of places, like I said, that had false starts. We just tried to get to over the last little while and haven't made it work. So, and there's a bunch of killer venues. There's a bunch of places we're going back to. There's new places. Um, And then I think ultimately there's just, we can still hear like online the chatter there from the fans. Man, they're as eager as we are still. Like it's, yeah. it's that still blows my mind. Mate, with Carnival, you've got a sound that's really kicked off all over the world. And a lot of bands, even though they've got good songs, 
can't crack that formula. Was that something you worked on or be honest, was it a fluke? Mm, good question. I don't know in the beginning if we had any idea of how to achieve it. Um, as we discovered sound and discovered maybe what the band's capable of and the sort of sound awaken into asymmetry, I think we found a, a better way to focus in on that. But in the beginning, no. I think inherently it's in the playing, man. Um, it's in the playing for sure, like playing in, with Bull and the lads in that band. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. But it is in the playing. And then, of course, as, you know, the band, as a group too, and, and through our pursuit of things that turn you on and, and your love for sound and reaction and, and the whole thing, I think that's where you start to fine-tune your sounds. And, yeah, I think we do that. We don't talk about it too much. John, our bass player, he's a bit of a tone warrior. Yeah. Um, and he chases and finds some really, really interesting things. And super cool. So, yeah, I think I think the dudes in these days, the, the, the guys in the band, love going down those rabbit holes, man. Oh, as a fan, completely agree. I don't know if you've seen this guy online, Rick Beato. He does what makes this song great and completely deconstructs the song like a music aficionado. Have you seen it? I have, yeah, and I love that dude, man. His vibe is yeah. all time. And he's just such a talent. I love where he comes from and his whole world of music so oh that blew our brains apart man like yeah. that literally what? broke our brains we were like yeah. this is so rad he's so good and he goes into so much detail which is above my head is it above your head is that how you think when you're writing music no we're very much on the that sounds cool sort of <laughs> side of things of course of course we understand well i don't too well but the lads in the band understand the whole layout and the notation and, and the design and the, what they're going for. But I think the way a cat like him, he, he, he literally interprets it the way he does, but he, he brings it down on a macro level. It's crazy. And I love seeing dudes like him interpret playing parts and their feel and they're running you through and using a different language to express yeah. how they feel about it that we just don't use or I don't use. And I think he's talking about um, some of the verse uh, melodies I'm using and I've, I'll change a couple of notes and he like he goes, yeah, that's kind of cool how he goes into this scale. And I'm like, I don't know what any of that means. I'm like, well, that sounds sick. I'm like, <laughs> but I just love his passion for it, like pure and so honest and literally enjoying it. I think that's what it comes down to when you see someone like that really enjoying finding something within something. It's like, ah, oh, f- that's yeah. cool. I stupidly asked the unofficial fan run carnival Facebook page if they had any questions whatsoever and I got inundated, Duncan wants to know, why is it all it takes or all I know? Why isn't it some of what it takes or a bit of my available knowledge? <laughs> Good question. Um, all I know, all it takes. And I thought about that when we had the title for all it takes. It's like, is that too close to all, all I know? But um, I don't know, sometimes these things, you find them already, you're saying them and you're calling it the song before the song's finished. But um all it takes is very much about doing what you need to do to get through the shit. And um, of late, I think we've all been through the shit. There's a lot of stuff within Carnival, creatively and personally, that are so closely aligned. They take a beat down and you've got to get through that beat down. You've got to do what it takes to get through. So. Loz wants to know, will you ever play some more of the same ever again? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. It's been a minute since we've done that. Uh, I'm not, look, I'm not ruling it out. Um, yeah. Maybe one day. I don't know. Probably All not. Right. I don't know. Jody wants you to recommend a show on Netflix or a book. I think they're trying to get into the way your brain works. Um, I'm a bit of a fantasy buff, to be honest. Anything that's like super dystopian sci-fi stuff, that's kind of my lane. Like end of days, like dystopian stuff, um, sci-fi, I'm really down that lane that is very much what and I, and I love i love going into scores for films like that and it's it's just bleak yeah. and i'm not a bleak dude i just i just like you know seeing what things may be sometime soon <laughs> yeah svenia wants to know how you keep that voice in such good shape um i think everyone wants to know the answer to that mate just well it's like an instrument man so just look after it figure out what works for it and what doesn't i think is a, is a good thing um 
as I get older, I've got to be a bit more mindful about what I do with it. When I was younger, I could kind of go out and party and party quite hard and bounce back. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Not anymore. But as you're touring, as your schedule becomes more and more, it demands more. So I'm lucky. I think I've got a decent voice, but it definitely, I definitely have to be mindful of what I'm doing with it. I would love to have one of those voices where, you know, I could just scream and go balls to the wall all the time and drink 20 beers and <laughs> kick ass and then wake up the next day and do it all over again. Yeah, I don't. I got. I got to kind of watch my shit. I do have to ask you on behalf of hundreds of Carnival fans that want to be to get this answer out of you. New Carnival album. What are we looking at here? I don't. I don't really have um, the timeline in place. We've got, man. We got like the skeleton of this next record kind of mapped out. Um, it's in. It's in a number of pieces, and that's not really the issue. It's just getting close to finishing enough pieces to get this thing seen in our heads. So like I said, don't know what that looks like, don't know when, um, but song by song at the moment, it's just feeling something that we can actually control and go with. Um, so let's see. There it is, Egg Kenny from Carnival. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Let's do this again sometime, bro. Oh, we will. All right, dude. Peace.